Welcome to this week's Sligo County Matters. Coming up in this evening's show, we're going to visit a new walk which recently opened in Sligo and brings you right up to the top of Knocknaray. We're then going out to Drum Cliff to the opening of the Textile Collective Exhibition and we have some magnificent music from Father Kevin Fallon. But first, let's go and meet up and coming actress Chelsea O'Connor. Chelsea, this all started for you when you were spotted on a street in Dublin, I believe. Yeah. So what happened? Um, well, I was scouted in Dublin um, by an agent, a um, modelling agent, and she just said that she really liked my look. And I had done like little bits at home with um, designer Sinead Carr, and um, I was like her little PA um, and then did modelling for her for lookbooks and stuff like that. So I'd already, and I'd done stuff in Spain since I was like 16. So I kind of had a background in it, but took a few years out. So when she kind of approached me, I thought, oh, I don't know what to do, you know. So I just went with it and, you know, went with it and seen what happened and liked it for a little while. And, you know, it got me in touch with a lot of good people in the creative industry. And, yeah, just I suppose you have to start from somewhere. And I, I loved I loved modelling, you know, when it was at this this getting loads of creative people together and then having an end product. And it's, it's nice, you know, but... Yeah. There's a lot more to it than what people think, which is just walking up and down the catwalk. Yeah. There's the whole getting together of a show and yeah. where you fit in and everything like yeah. that. So you enjoyed that part of it. Yeah, like it, like meeting all the girls as well. Like when I joined I joined First Options, that was my agency at the time and it was nice like meeting all the girls in the agency and everyone has this kind of family unit when you're in an agency, you know, everyone kind of looks out for one another and stuff like that. So you know, that that was nice, meeting all the girls and, you know, bonding in a sense, you know, and we'd all go for coffee and, you know, go to shows together and, yeah, it was nice. And then you did the music video. Yeah. And was that a break? Um, yeah, it was between me and two other top models in um, Ireland and she had it as a very minimal casting. And I remember walking into the room and I had just come back from a job with Wella and my hair was dark pink and bright pink and light pink and everything and I just looked like a whack job at the time so I just come back from the job and um, the other two models they're really well known Irish models and I thought oh there's no way you know one was blonde one was brunette and then I've got this wacky pink hair I was like I'll just go with it and see what happened and I was in the gaiety at the time anyway um, and yeah so I just went for the casting and they said straight away they seen me as the character and they just wanted me blonde and that was when I got the job and I was over the moon, yeah. And so now you've got very exciting things happening with your yeah. acting career. Yeah. So you moved from modelling, you did the, the, tell us the the video you did for the music, what band was it again? It was called, they were called Sweet Jane at the time, but now they're called Buffalo Sun. And the production company was Cashmere Media. And it's just um, a group of friends really, like, and they, um, they just, they, they're very, they work always with the Jameson Film Festival and stuff like that. So quite well known in the industry and they really help me like they know so much about films and for me just starting out as an actor that insight even into film insight you know and little, like little quotes and here and there and stuff like that and we had three days on set and because I'm in the whole bit so we had three separate days and it was just yeah it was great experience and my first time it was a great experience to have you know and what's happening now um, now I've just finished, I've just wrapped on a film, feature film called Bully, uh, director Stephen Gaffney, um, with Kieran O'Reilly, um, Kieran McCabe, and um, a few other actors. And yeah, it's been a great experience. You know, I'm great friends with Kieran O'Reilly from Love Hate, and to, for us to work together on that was just, it was lovely. You know, it was really nice. We had loads of fun, it was good crack. Um, and then the more serious sort of scenes were done just recently about two weeks ago and then we wrapped and stuff so it's it's been great like it's been a long long kind of process but it's been great so now that you've broken a bit into the acting business mm. what do you see as the future for you um I'd love I've just done film so I've you know I've done I've done a big kind of commercial film then I've done a few indies and if you know um music videos and stuff like that and it's all very film um, so I'd love to get into a bit of TV. Like I find there's, it's more diverse for women characters in TV rather than in film. But I do love film. Like that's where I think that's where my heart and soul is with, you know, the acting and stuff like that. But I'd always be open to 
you know, to going down a different route and stuff like that. But TV is kind of on my brain a lot lately, you know. And do you have anything in the pipeline just at the moment? Um, I've got a few, a few kind of big auditions to go for um, in the US and in the UK. So, yeah, so kind of like just going with that. But we'll see what happens. You know, I'm, I'm great believer in, you know, whatever, you know, whatever happens won't pass you and stuff like that. And, yeah, whatever's meant to be, it'll be. So we'll just see and what happens. can we in Sligo get to see the movie The Bully? Will it be coming out in yeah, our cinemas? It, um, so basically it'll be finished um, in post on August, I think. And then it'll go around the film festival circuit coming January. So that's when the film festival circuit starts happening. So it'll be entered into all them. So I think once it's done its rounds, then we'll see what happens. It'll be released and stuff like that. But hopefully, because it's so controversial, I have a feeling it will be released in Ireland. I hope. <laughs> I don't know. I hope. But. Well, ne needless to say, I'm sure you're going to land one of the big roles in the UK and oh, the USA. And you might come back and tell us all about it on Sligo County yeah. Matters. No, I'd love to. Yeah. <laughs> okay, well, thank you very much thank for you. joining us, Chelsea. Thank you. I suspect we'll be hearing an awful lot more about Chelsea O'Connor in the future. Now we're here in Strand Hill and we're going to hear about a new walk which brings you right up to the top of Knocknaray. Michael, tell me, how did this walk all come about? This walk came about because of the support of the landowners here in Strand Hill, who we approached uh, with a view to constructing a walk directly from Strand Hill to access the cairn of Queen Maeve on top of Knocknarea. This is a, a free resource to the, the people of Sligo, to the people of the North West and to visitors from throughout the world who can come to Strand Hill, participate in all the offerings that Strand Hill has and then readily accessible from the village, make their way to Queen Maeve's Cairn and look down on the, the beauty that is Sligo Bay and surroundings. Absolutely free of charge. And Ray, you were also involved in developing this walk. So what does someone see who would be interested in, in going and taking part? Well, you start here opposite uh, Sligo Rugby Club on, on the Sligo access into Strand Hill Village. And um, you have an ascent of approximately 300 metres or just over 900 feet. So it's a fantastic pipe opener and um, it's, it's available to all types of people who want to come to Strand Hill. There's public transport out here uh, coming from Sligo on the bus and things like that. So it's, it's really accessible. Now, when you get up to the top, you'll see a panorama of the whole of the northwest of Ireland. You'll see uh, Donegal, counties Donegal, Mayo, uh, Leitrim and Roscommon. Uh, you can see Tishleave League. It's, it's absolutely fantastic. Um, on, on the way up you'll see uh, cairns and archaeology, old houses, and we have bit, little pieces of the history brought out along the route. So from that perspective, we hope it's interesting, we hope people enjoy it, and we invite everyone to come along. Dr. Berg, we're here at the foot of the Knocknaray mountain for the launch of the trail today. Can you tell me some of the history of this mountain? Well, it's one of those kind of iconic mountains, and especially it's the sort of focal point for County Sligo and the entire northwest. Uh, this kind of well conspicuous um, table mountain stands out against, the, against the, the, the skyline of the horizon, which is fantastic, but also the fact that it has been used so intensively in the main in the Neolithic period from about 4000 to about 2000 BC for ritual purposes and that's the reason why we do see it's crowned with this massive Queen Maeve's cairn but also many other passage tombs and other ritual um, monuments up there so it's been a focal and, and very very important site uh, probably for the creating identity for this part of Sligo so it's um, 
that's one of the main aspects of, of, of Nocturne A making it so important to all of us. And is it true that Queen Maeve is actually buried in the Kern? Well, it's not really true. But do, what do we know? Uh, I think the, the link with Queen Maeve and Sligo is very, very weak. Um, but it's named Queen Maeve's Cairn. And of course, naming cairns like this, is uh, you have to explain to children or to people that wouldn't know what it's that, that cairn for. And then you come up with something, with some very good explanation. And of course, Queen Maeve, the, being, the big warrior queen of Connaught, is the be best explanation you can get. So that's why Queen Maeve has given a name to the cairn. But of course, the cairn is, it dates to about 3,500 BC, so that's at least 3,000 years before Queen Maeve was even thought of. Okay, well we might leave believing a little bit of magic there, because it is, <laughs> I think we should too, because it is magical and all the way through the walk there are information boards. Yes, I'm delighted to see that now finally, that we do have uh, information boards in five different places from the car park on the southern side of Nocturne Ray all the way up to the summit, explaining the main parts of, of the archaeology and the history of, of, of Nocturne Ray. And especially also there's a deserted village on, on the south side, uh, which uh, Annie West, the, 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 um, the uh, artist, has so cleverly illustrated. As we try to create that, that story as well, because it's important to be, to be able to create a narrative to, for the visitors. And I, I, I think that's what we're trying to do with the uh, with the information boards and uh, there's also a lot of complicated archaeology that we try to make um, approachable and, 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 and understandable in general terms and I, think, I hope we succeed in that. Well I'm sure you're delighted to see the mountain open today. Oh yeah especially a fantastic day like this and a big crowd and I'm delighted with all the work and I'm very pleased with the, the way the walks have been arranged and we try to to, to, to avoid the worst part of the, the archaeology but also to be to create an to informative trade for people so I think the people surely as you can see will enjoy the walk. That walk is such a great addition to Sligo. Don't forget if you have missed any of the Irish TV programmes you can visit the website at irishtv.ie to catch up. We have to take a break now but join us after the break where we're going to drum cliff to the textile collective exhibition and we have some beautiful music from Father Kevin Fallon. <laughs> 